So finally, GoldenEye is out after many years of delays and false starts to get it re-released on modern consoles. With it being a licensed video game, there was always going to be hurdles to jump to clear the legal stuff, but also to resolve the long-running disputes between Nintendo, Microsoft, who own Rare, who developed the game back in 1997, and MGM and Eon Studios, who own the rights to James Bond. Back in 2007, things were looking positive. Rare were in development of remastering GoldenEye for the Xbox 360, with an HD upgrade of the visuals with all new textures and improved character models, plus online multiplayer. It also gave you the option to switch between the old and new graphics, but its release date for 2008 was scrapped due to more legal issues, with many pointing to Nintendo as the cause of the problem. But the license to make James Bond video games had jumped around to different companies, so to get full clearance it became too difficult. But to many people's surprise, it would eventually be leaked in early 2020 but the version that is now available for the Xbox and the Switch is not the remastered version that was intended to be released nearly 15 years ago, but instead a bulk standard release with little bells and whistles and can be summed up as a lazy port. Now back in 1997, before the game hit the N64 in the UK, I don't recall there being much hype for it. There had been previews and such in magazines, but there wasn't much talk as it was a game based on a movie from two years ago and Tomorrow Never Dies was about to hit cinemas. The movie Goldeneye was now seen as old news, and licensed video games never had a good rap, with more bad games than good. But once it hit store shelves, talk spread like wildfire. It was a must-have game. At the time, I had a Sega Saturn, and the N64 looked very appealing, and I remember reading the review of Goldeneye in the November issue of CVG, and seeing the high score. I did feel I was missing out. But on the following page it had Duke Nukem 3D on the Saturn, which received, like Goldeneye, a 5 out of 5 score, so I was happy to stick with my Sega Saturn. My close friend at the time, his older brother, managed to get the game on release. Now you may think game prices are high now, but Nintendo cartridges in the UK were an absolute rip-off, and Goldeneye came with a high price tag, costing well over £60. In today's money that's about 140 quid. Getting my hands on it was an incredible experience. You could finally play a proper 3D FPS game on a console without having to spend £1,000 or more on a Pentium PC, but also GoldenEye had features you couldn't find at the time in other games on the PC of this genre. So it felt very unique and a big selling point to grab an N64. The game's music did a superb job of capturing Eric Serra's score for the film, and the N64 soundtrack became popular in its own right. Over the years, the game remained one of the main reasons to own the console, and as retro gaming became more popular in the mid-2000s and to this day, every top 10 retro gaming list you see, Goldeneye is always near the top. As graphics have improved over the years, the game certainly doesn't match contemporary games, as many 3D titles of the 90s look very rough by today's standards, and haven't aged as well compared to titles that were in 2D at the time, from the likes of SNK and Capcom. But GoldenEye seemed to grow old gracefully, despite the cardboard-like characters and their somewhat deformed faces. What kept gamers going back to it was its solid gameplay. When they announced it was coming out to the Xbox and Switch, in my head I was expecting a bit more effort was going to be put into this release. Multiplayer online and the graphics would be spiced up a bit to give it a fresh lick of paint, but sadly not. Now this is my fault in presuming that. All they promised was GoldenEye and that was it, nothing extra. With it being its 25th anniversary, surely more time and effort could have gone into this release. There is no physical disc, just thrown out digitally, with some changes to the code to make it work on the Xbox and Switch, essentially. Being an Xbox owner, there is no multiplayer online, only local, which really annoyed me. The game is available on Game Pass, but if you don't have that option, you can get it for free with Rare Replay, a collection they put out years ago. But you can only get it for free if you have a digital copy, not a physical disc, forcing folk to double dip, which is very cheeky. Presentation-wise, it looks okay. It retains the classic N64 look, with the added fog to avoid the distance of the map just popping into view, as the foggy effect helps it appear smoothly. Apparently the game is in 4K on the Xbox, but it doesn't look like that. It looks more like 1080p at most, running at 30 frames per second, which dips now and again, most often doing the snow stage called Surface. The leaked remastered version ran far better than this. My first impressions was like, this looks like how the game looked if you emulated the N64 on your PC or Mac. But coming with emulation, you encounter graphical bugs, as it's never 100%, with added glitches and textures looking washed out as the software attempts to upscale the image. This is exactly how it performs on the modern consoles. Apparently, the Switch version looks a bit more rough around the edges compared to its Xbox counterpart. 
The game offers a variety of aspect ratios, the standard one on the Xbox is ideal as everyone owns widescreen TVs. You get the original aspect ratio and super wide which is a bit pointless but the option is there to maintain the original look of the game. Despite it being a lazy port and the graphics only getting a slight upgrade, the core gameplay remains intact. It's still the same fun shooter as it was back in the late 90s. There is still that addictive aspect to it to complete the extra missions on the higher difficulty. But one of the best parts of what made GoldenEye so fun was the multiplayer. Sure it's there if you want to play with friends in the same room, but gaming has changed a lot since 1997 and has switched to online and not having that option is a right kick in the balls. Does GoldenEye compare to modern shooters? No, not really. It's very clunky in areas and stiff in places to control. The AI is dumb as hell. Trying to do that jungle level with Natalia was a nightmare. The amount of times I shouted, bloody woman, get out of the way! And a number of the stages are just very forgettable. Though it's pretty faithful to the movie, they do take liberties with the story to include areas that Bond doesn't appear in the film. The ones they create specifically for the game are often the most boring levels. The Switch version does thankfully have multiplayer, but only via screen sharing, there is no matchmaking, so it's not really a proper option built into the game, but at least there is an option to play with your friends. Also the controls are a bit janky as default, so it's recommended to remap them for your pro controller, to make it control like a modern shooter, whereas the default controls on the Xbox are perfectly fine. There has always been strong nostalgia associated with GoldenEye on the N64, and with it not being re-released officially until now, and with most people not playing it for years and only relying on childhood memories, the nostalgia goggles can play tricks with you. It hasn't aged particularly well as an FPS shooter, it certainly needed a new lease of life in the graphical presentation, and the game engine itself needed some of the tech issues resolved to maintain a consistent frame rate. For example, once an explosion or two goes off, the slowdown kicks in. This should have been corrected. Overall, it's nice to be able to play it officially, thus avoiding trying to make it work via emulation. It's just a massive missed opportunity we didn't get the remastered version, or at the very least, they just put in a little more effort into improving the game's performance and offered online play. It's an important title in video game history, and for it to be so carelessly released with little effort, it's a massive shame. Maybe the cost of sorting out the legal stuff didn't leave much funding to do much with the game, and to avoid extra costs, they just did the bare bones amount of work needed to get it out there. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and click the bell to be notified of my latest retrospectives and reviews. Big thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved and gain early access to my content and exclusive videos, then follow the link below.